This is a M4A1 carbine, uh, magazine fed, gas operated. As you can see, my barrel's a little short. When it comes to close quarter battles, it's easier to get around corners. And also uh, with tactical security details, it's a whole lot easier to conceal these than it would be a normal barrel M4. Hi, I'm A1C Devin, Dagger team member at the 27th Special Operations Security Forces Squadron at Cannon Air Force Base. And this is everything I carry with me on a mission. So this right here is our battle belt. This is what we would consider our Lime One. As you can see, it's a two-piece system. You have our actual belt right here, and then you see myself wearing an inner belt, and it just Velcros on here. Uh, it's a Cobra belt, so it just snaps into place. And then it also has a D-ring right here. So starting from here, going to my left side, my D-ring, I have my aircraft tie-in. It has a quick release here, so if I just pull this, it'll quick release from here. And then I have it routing it to the back of my belt. I have it secured with 550 cord right here. This is the actual part I would tie to the aircraft. Um, I can quickly put it on that D-ring as well. And then I have another carabiner I can secure it from there. Going on, uh, I just have a little wiring ring where I can uh, attach chem lights if need be for the mission. That's just secured onto the, the D-ring as well. Going to the left, I have uh, two M18 mags. I uh, usually carry three, one in the actual M18 and then two here on the side on our belts. So you have my ready mag or my M, uh, M4 magazine would be. Moving on, right behind it, I have my multi-tool. It has multi-functional capabilities. Uh, actually, if my M4 jams, this tool right here, I can unjam my M4 with that. Has pliers, has a bunch of knives, has uh, screwdrivers on there. I can fix just about anything with this multi-tool here. This pouch here, uh, we're really big on multi-purpose pouches. So as you can see, I held my M4 and my multi-tool. If you open this up, I have the capability of holding smokes, grenade, whatever else I need to stuff in here but I uh, always have a notepad with me to take notes. Continuing, I have sheet sheets in here. So any uh, military reporting that I forget in the heat of the moment, I can always reference this and then it's right there. And then you always wanna have a nine line on you. So. What's that? So a nine line medevac, if anybody needs to get medically evac, it's a military report that will, that you up channel so that casualty can get up routed. Uh, it relays information of how many patients, what the care uh, that the patient could potentially care if there's security at the site being picked up or any sort of that matter. This right here is a carabiner. I talked about it a little bit. I currently have uh, fast rope mags. So if we need to do fast rope insertions from a helicopter, these are the, the gloves you would use on top of our shooting gloves. Just so don't, we don't burn our hands going down that rope. This is a uh, dump pouch. I currently have a water bottle in there. Uh, it's 32 ounces, but that's typically what I keep in there. You can also uh, obviously dump your magazines in there, snacks, wrappers, whatever you need to dump and have on your person, you can keep here. I always personally have mine open just cause I always need it. Uh, have a knife. Uh, this is kind of just in case both my weapon systems go down, I can still remain in the fight. So right here I have uh, my M18 holster. M18, it's on safe, there's nothing in here. Uh, this is a uh, SIG M18. If I don't have my M4, this is gonna be, I guess you could say my primary uh, weapon I'd use. But if my M4 runs out of ammo, I'm gonna transition to my M18. My, my M4 jams and I can't fix it at that moment, I'm gonna transition to my M18 here. Moving on, uh, I have a tourniquet right here. It's just secured by some bungee cord. So I have a tourniquet and then I have a red chem stick, which uh, we mark whenever there's a tourniquet. We place a tourniquet on somebody, we'll mark out for a red chem stick just in case somebody comes by and lets the other person know that that person has a tourniquet on them. The tourniquet, the tourniquet would be placed to somebody. So I'll do it on myself just for show. High and tight, right? So tourniquet, and then with this excess material, this is where you can secure the tourniquet. So after it's tightened, then you have all this excess material that you can mess around with, and then you can just Velcro it in there, or 
you can take this chem stick and just put it in one of the pockets in our uniforms um, for our limbs. And then lastly, I just have my shooting gloves, some uh, personal protection equipment. Um, they just serve the purpose of protecting my hands so that it doesn't get burned by brass or I fall down and don't scratch my hands. So next is our plate carrier, what we consider our line two. So we'll start from top to bottom here in the front plate. So off the top, right in this little pouch I have of here, I just have a non-permanent marker. The sheet sheets I showed you earlier, I can write on that with this. And then I also have frog tape, which is just basically duct tape compact like this. It's usable for multiple occasions. Going down, you see these two things uh, secured onto my plate carrier here. So these are my PTTs, push to talks. So uh, we have our headsets set up to this and then to our radios. So anytime I need to communicate with my teammate, I can just press uh, one of these PTTs and it'll signal for me to transmit over the radio. As you can see, I have two. So I have the ability to run two different frequencies on two different radios. Going down, uh, we have our magazines, our M4 magazines. I, have, I personally have three up front. Going down into our admin pouch, uh, just miscellaneous stuff. Uh, we're always gonna have a uh, red light capability with us when it gets dark. For us, we put this around our neck, so anytime it's getting dark, we're gonna put this around our neck so we can always have red light with us. So red light is your eyes, it's easier for you to adjust compared to any other light. Um, if you're working, let's say with a patient that has a gunshot wound, uh, you would switch over to blue light just because the blood is easier to see with blue light. But we stick with red light because it's easier for our, our eyes to adjust. Uh, next thing's a neck gaiter slash face covering. In our line of work, uh, you never know when media is going to show around and we don't want our, face to reveal, our faces to be revealed. So we'll just throw this on. Also, if it's really dusty coming out of a plane or a helicopter, it's not fun getting dust in your face. So we'll throw this on as well. Uh, always keep a lighter on you. Right, uh, it could be a survival situation or you just have some loose ends that you can need to burn off your uniform. Lighter will get that done. Again, I have a roll of duct tape. Duct tape fixes many things. And then I also have rubber bands just secured by a little alligator crib right here. And that is it for my admin pouch. If we keep going down, this down, down here, this is our blowout kit, right? So. Uh, each person is supposed to run an IFAC, an individual first aid kit. Um, so they're supposed to run that and they're supposed to have a certain amount of things within the IFAC. If they don't, this is something we could work out of. So if they have any missing items, for example, uh, an MPA. So this would be usual when a patient's not breathing properly through their mouth, you put this through their nose and it allows air to flow into their, their lungs. This would be a decompression needle. So if there's unequal rise and fall of the chest, is something you could use to um, fix that, I guess you could say. As you can see, you have another tourniquet. We have a rule of thumb. We always have three tourniquets. So far, you've seen two out of three. You have medical gloves. You have lube to get that MPA into the nose that we talked about earlier. Oh yeah, combat gauze. So to treat any gunshot wounds, you just pack it into the gunshot. And then we have a chest seal. So if someone were to get in the chest, this is something you would place over it. Uh, going back to the radios, so as you can see, I have two radio pouches. Like I stated earlier, I have the ability to run two radios. I'm not always gonna run that. But if I don't run it, this can just easily be stored away. As you see over here, I have a radio. My PTT was attached to it. Uh, this is a 152 Alpha. Uh, the difference between the Alpha and the normal is the Alpha has the ability to have GPS, where the 152 does not. So moving on to my left side of my cumber buns, uh, I have this pouch here, which allows me to store uh, more magazines if I need to carry that on the mission, depending. Or I can store a uh, smaller water bottle, smokes, grenades, whatever, like I said, a really big on multi-purpose pouches. And here, I have chem sticks. These are used to mark different things. So 
if we're not making entrance into the building, we'll mark it with red. Let them know the team. Let the team know that we're not entering in that building. Or if the building's clear, we'll throw a different color uh, on the floor. Also, I have a compass in here for land navigation. And then I have a protractor as well for land navigation. I have a grenade pouch back here. For us, the main purpose is not to hold a grenade pouch. This is actually meant to hold a 152 radio battery. So if we're going on a prolonged mission and I know I'm gonna need an extra battery, I'm just gonna throw that in here. I can run a grenade on it, but we typically don't. As you can see here, I have another tourniquet. Like I said, rule of thumb for us is three. Uh, it's just secured by bungee cord like it was on my, my belt. Moving on to the back of the plate, I like to keep it pretty slick. Some other guys like to put other things back here. I have the ability to do that. Personally, I just don't like doing it, so I keep it slick. Uh, as you can see, I have these uh, flexi cups secured in the back. So anytime we have a puck, which would be a person under custody, we have the ability to uh, you know, keep them under custody, uh, handcuff them, and then put a um, blacked out goggles over them so they don't know where they're at. Moving on, we have tubular nylon. This has multiple purposes. Uh, the way I have set it up right now, as you can see, it's secured by rubber bands. So my teammates can just snap that off without having to pull off a bungee cord or anything like that. They pull this off and then it extends about 10, 15 feet and I can get pulled from a distance if I need be. Or this can make a hasty litter as well. So if anybody needs to uh, get medevaced and we don't have a litter, and this is something that we could potentially use to get the medevac. What is a litter? A litter, so a litter would be a equipment that you would use on a person that can't walk, that we could get them um, exfilled out of that location. Keep on going. I have another uh, magazine pouch. Again, big on multi-purpose, so I can store another up to two other M4 magazines in here. I just have a clear eye pro when we go shooting on the range. And that is it for my uh, plate carrier line two. Moving on to my helmet, what we consider our line three. This is an Opscore ballistic helmet, standard issue. Uh, as you can see up front, we have uh, MVGs, night vision goggles. These are um, PVS 15s. They're a little outdated by military standards, but they get the job done. As you can see, we have a mount here that allows us to adjust, flip up, and then adjust according to each person. So these are adjusted to my to myself right now. Moving on to the left, you see I have a light secured by Velcro. You can um, attach it to this railing right here, but I personally like having the option of being able to take it off and off. This has red, blue, and white light capability. On the back here, we have our counterweight right there. So inside here, there's our actual counterweights secured by a uh, elastic in there and then we also have uh, extra batteries that you can run in the back of our counterweight and it adds a little extra weight and on top we have a Hellstar um, it's an IR strobe uh, it can do constant IR or flashing IR not only that but it can also do green light so that's constant and that's going to be strobing and then uh, on the right side just go a little American flag here um, along with my helmet some guys attach their Peltors to their helmet. Me, personally, I don't like doing that because sometimes we don't have to wear a helmet when doing training and missions. So Peltors, uh, like I said, these connect, as you can see on the back. These connect to the back, or excuse me, these connect to our PTTs, which was on, on my plate carrier, and then those PTTs connect to the radios. So then we have communications with our team or whoever, whoever else. Uh, needs to. These are also Bluetooth capable, so we don't even need radios if we're, you're within the distance. This is an M4A1 carbine, uh, magazine fed, gas operated, uh, has, semi, or has safe, semi-auto, and fully automatic. Uh, in the back, I just have a standard buttstock. As you can see, uh, my barrel's a little short is because I have a Mark 18 upper. Uh, just because of some of the missions that we run, it's easier to run a shortened barrel than a standard length uh, M4. When it comes to close quarter battles, it's easier to get around corners. And also uh, with tactical security details, it's a whole lot easier to conceal these than it would be a normal barrel M4. As you can see, I have an ebidextrous 
charging handle. I have a three times magnifier. I have an EOTech for my sight. I have a standard issue PEG 15 um, up front. And then I have a light that can run IR or white light. And if we're doing a longer extended uh, mission, longer foot movement, um, where speed is our security, we're not gonna be wearing our plate carriers just because it's gonna slow us down. So we're gonna be using our chest rigs here. Everything mission essential that's on my plate carrier, I can transfer onto my chest rig. Ooh. And this is gonna be our ruck, our 72 hour bag. Um, we, we are self sustained up to 94 hours. So day of employment plus another 72 hours on top of that. And this is what we would carry if we were dropped with one of those missions. So uh, we're definitely gonna have uh, extra uniforms. Now we're gonna have MREs, so meals ready to eat. Uh, cold weather gear, depending uh, where we're going. Uh, hot or jet boils to cook our food because those MREs heaters kind of suck. Um, snacks and then like bed down, clothes, definitely um, sleeping bags, tents if, if we need to, depending on the mission. And this is everything I would carry with me on a mission. So all together, uh, weight wise, you're looking about anywhere from 50 to 150 pounds, depending on what you're packing.